All right, we are turning back to the breaking news this morning. New video just released by Russia showing U.S. and Canadian fighter jets intercepting Russian Chinese military planes off of the coast of Alaska. And you can see the, in the video the planes flying just feet apart here. U.S. Air Force jets dispatched just hours before President Biden addressed the nation about his decision to end his reelection campaign. And it comes before Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is meeting with the president and then the vice president at the White House today. This is the first time the U.S. has ever intercepted Chinese military planes off the coast of Alaska, and the incident involved two Russian and then two Chinese bombers. The four planes remaining in international airspace, not crossing into American or Canadian air. Earlier, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin answering some questions about the Pentagon's response. This was not a surprise to us. We uh, closely monitored uh, uh, these aircraft uh, tracked the aircraft, intercepted the aircraft, uh, and uh, which demonstrates that our, you know, our forces are at the ready. This is the first time that we've seen these two countries fly together uh, uh, like that. Uh, they didn't, uh, they didn't um, enter our airspace. Uh, I think the closest point of approach was about 200 miles off the, off of our uh, uh, coast. This is a, a relationship that. We have been concerned about. Got a relationship we've been concerned about. And joining me now to talk about this, Colonel Daniel Davis, Senior Fellow at Defense Priorities and host of the Daniel Davis Deep Dive on YouTube. It is good to see you, Colonel. Thanks for being here. Let's talk about this. Why do you believe uh, that the Russian and Chinese jets would jointly enter this international airspace so close to Alaska? And what do you make of the timing? Does it have anything to do with Prime Minister Netanyahu being on Capitol Hill? Yeah, I, I look at the timing first. I, I doubt that seriously whether it has any relevance to to either the Netanyahu speech or or the Biden announcement that came out. I think those were incidental to it. I think the much bigger message, though, is just to say, hey, listen, you guys keep pushing us, uh, you know, in into each other's arms, and it's working because mm -hmm. Russia and China are continuing to expand their relationships economically, militarily, uh, diplomatically. They're they're expanding, especially in the BRICS. There's a a big meeting coming up in October uh, of this year where they're going to expand it to even larger. They're going to be talking about going into monetary capacities that bypass the dollar that could potentially weaken American economic capabilities throughout the globe. Uh, all of these are messages that uh, we're not going to be pushed around anymore. And, and I've been arguing for quite a long time now that our policies, both in the Indo-Pacific and especially with the results of the Russia-Ukraine war, is having a negative response because we have pushed these guys much closer together and given them reason to want to do things like this. And this is a message that shows what's going on now is going to continue to go on. Interesting. Do you think we are seeing increased presence and aggression and cooperation between Russia and China right now. And now that we are here, what should the U.S. do about this? Well, it, cooperation for sure, not aggression. Th this is them pushing back against what we've been doing. I mean, and when we're physically providing all kinds of weapons and ammunition that directly uh, destroy Russian forces in the field and now even targets that are inside Russian territory that we've now given them permission to do, we can just, I mean, how could we not expect there to be some kind of response? Vladimir Putin has been very clear that he's going to continue to take commensurate lateral actions. And I think this is an evidence of one of them. We, we also may see uh, Russian missiles in the Houthis' hands, in the Mediterranean, in the situation going on down there. And there could be others. But it, we keep ignoring what the Russians are saying, and, and the Chinese as well, that they're coming closer together because we, we don't want it to work that way. But then we keep doing things that push people in that direction. And to your question about what we can do about it, we've got to change our policy. And I, and I know that nobody in Washington likes to hear that. We want to think we can do whatever we want, and there won't be consequences. But I'm telling you, there are consequences. And this, while it wasn't aggressive, it was a note that says we have the ability. And now this is the first time ever that Chinese jets took off from a Russian airbase and then came close to our territorial airspace. I understand. Short of uh, stopping the funding and support to Ukraine, uh, what other policy changes are, are you speaking about? But really, there, there really aren't any, because as long as we keep having policies, especially in the Indo-Pacific, that, you know, in uh, giving more and more arms to, to Taiwan, we, we just had another big package of that, and we're giving more and more arms and weapons into Ukraine against Russia. 
as long as we keep going on those policies, nothing else is really going to make any difference because these folks are going to keep working in areas uh, that try to undermine our uh, influence around the world. And they're doing it mainly in the economic spheres. But they're showing with this patrol here that if it gets to it, it can include a military sphere. That's the big message I think they're trying to send. Okay, appreciate that context. Colonel Daniel Davis, thank you so much for joining us today. Always my pleasure.